Hey everybody, we are off and running on this latest Wednesday edition of Thoroughbred Action, kicking off a new week of racing here at Gulfstream Park. This is Jason Blewett joining you in the shade here at Gulfstream in our classy walking ring. Ten races on the program this afternoon to bring you and a whole lot of track announcer Pete Aiello, who's coming up next. Ten races to get Holy Bull Week underway in South Florida. A great day in the weather department. Temperatures in the upper 70s, a fast main track and a firm turf course. First of the day over that firm turf course brings out three-year-olds in for $20,000. Scratch the three and the eight, a field of seven. Favorite was the five, quick enough. Racing at Goldstream. Last in, first out, it's Captain Flint from the outside crossing over to the rail and doing so pretty easily. Down at the inside goes Bundy Bundy and from between horses being fun. El Gran Cacao Park widest of all, followed by Quick Enough. Second last is Shanghai Moon and the early trailer is all the hype. In the charge around the first turn, it's Captain Flint who has control. He leads being fun by a length and a quarter. At the inside and Bundy Bundy is together with El Gran Cacao third and fourth. Back to fifth and quick enough, a length and a half better than Shanghai Moon. And still unhurried is all the hype. The opening quarter complete in 23 and 1. The field of seven separated by eight lengths as they chase Captain Flint up the back stretch. Captain Flint in front by a length and a quarter. On the outside and being fun while second, Bundy Bundy third, El Gran Cacao fourth. Quick Enough is in the two-path between horses in fifth. Only three lengths off the pace setter. Two better than Shanghai Moon. And up the back is all the hype. Inside half a mile from home through a 47-1 and one opening half mile. With the advantage, it's Captain Flint in front three parts of a length. From the outside and being fun second, Bundy Bundy is third. Quick Enough still in that two-path from fourth and starting to quicken up a touch. Getting a length and a half better than El Gran Cacao, who's three in front of Shanghai Moon. All the hype is last as they run around the far turn. Here's Saez, three wide on Quick Enough, trying to go get being fun and Captain Flint. At the inside and Bundy Bundy fourth with three sixteenths to go. On the far outside, Quick Enough continues to charge and Quick Enough is now charged to the front. Bundy Bundy shaking free to try to get into second. Quick Enough less than a 16th from home on top. Bundy Bundy takes a late push on the outside. Quick enough, Bundy Bundy lifting. It's quick enough, who is indeed that. He wins by an neck over Bundy Bundy with Shanghai Moon third. Being Fun was fourth in 136 and four. Appropriately named winner of the first of the day is number five, Quick Enough, which just that as he holds on narrowly to get the first race victory. And jockey Luis Saez for Mike Rapoli's Rapoli Racing Stable and trainer Todd Pletcher. Good run from number one, Bundy Bundy. He kicked late to just miss in his turf debut. We go to the second race and the start of the early pick four, six furlongs to the trip. Claimers in for a price tag of 12,500. Scratch the one and the four. The favorites were the two, Desert General, and the six, Starship Apollo. And they're off. Level beginning. Soon after the start, it was Jersey Joe B who ran up to put a neck on top toward the outside Starship Apollo away in good shape. Desert General is at the inside third. Followed fourth by Tip Sheet, who's only almost two lengths off the lead, and the trailer is Trapezoid. Down the back stretch they go with the red advantage on the lead, Jersey Joe B. Sanchez in the two pass with Starship Apollo second, three wide. Tip Sheet is now third. Zayas and the favorite Desert General travel from fourth behind a 23 and one opening quarter, and the trailer is Trapezoid. Around the far turn they go, and here's Starship Apollo to make a bid at Jersey Joe B. Meanwhile, the other favorite, Desert General, is a hard-ridden fourth. Tip sheet's right with him, and the trailer is Trapezoid. Past the 5 16th, Jersey, Joe B, repelling the initial challenge from Starship Apollo. Two and a half clear of tip sheet, then Desert General and Trapezoid through a 45 and three half mile. Off the turn in the stretch drive, Jersey, Joe B has a kick and puts away Starship Apollo. Desert General toward the inside. Final eighth of a mile, and Jersey, Joe B is finding under Torres. Jersey, Joe B by three. The battle's for second, but Jersey, Joe B is a gate to wire winner over Starship Apollo second and Desert General third. If you backed either one of the favorites in today's second race, you really never thought you had a chance as Desert General was hard-ridden and really not comfortable. And Starship Apollo made the move to the far turn to get Jersey Joe B. And Jersey Joe B pulled back away. Jersey Joe B with something in the tank. He gets a third choice victory here today. And a nice handling from Christian Torres for trainer Carlos David and the Olympia Stable. $9 winner, Jersey Joe B to start the early pick four. And we'll be right back.
No medication, no problem. Run happy, standing at Claiborne Farm. Back now for race number three on the afternoon on the turf at a mile on the 16th. Starter allowance optional claiming horses in for $16,000. Scratch the five and the six, a field of five. The favorites were the two, Tropicat, and the three, Alien Invasion. And they're up. Good start for Alien Invasion at the inside Tropicat from the outside King Orb is going after the leader early. And the early trailer is the Invader High Noon Rider. And the charge to the first turn, Alien Invasion and Zayas in front now by a length and a quarter. King Orb will try to slipstream while second toward the inside and Tropicat a joint third on his outside in discreet heat. And the trailer is High Noon Rider. Around the first turn they go. Alien Invasion on top a length and a half. King Orb is in a tracking roll, second, three clear of discreet heat, third. Tropicat is unhurried under Haramail, fourth at the inside, and the trailer is High Noon Rider. Won't be any change in the plot here for at least the three-eighths of a mile as Alien Invasion struts his stuff with a two-length lead. King Orb, second, discreet heat, third, at the inside, Tropicat, fourth, and High Noon Rider at the back. They go to the half-mile grounds. Alien Invasion bumps the margin a touch. He leads it by two and a half through a 48 and two half miles. So he did quicken up in the second quarter there. Third is Discreet Heat, fourth in Tropicat, and at the back is High Noon Rider. Just above three and a half furlongs to go as they take it to the far turn. Alien Invasion on top. Now here's Tropicat put into the two path and asked to quicken up. King Orb is back to third at the inside and High Noon Rider and the trailer is Discreet Heat. And now the pace quickens. Alien Invasion about to be challenged by Tropicat on the outside. High Noon Rider comes alive for Gaff Leone and King Orb is back to fourth. Three quarters, one ten and four. Tropicat under a full head of steam comes away with the lead. At the inside an Alien Invasion down the center. High Noon Rider is coming out and coming on. Here's High Noon Rider lifting for Tyler G. And High Noon Rider powers away. High Noon Rider going away to beat King Orb. Alien Invasion's back up for third. Tropicat made the lead and then backpedaled the fourth in 140 and one. Turning for home, Tropicat appeared to have Alien Invasion put away and he'd have some closers to hold off. In the end, Tropicat found nothing under pressure and the closers did win the race as number one, High Noon Rider. Last to first to win under a nice ride from Tyler Gaffleon with the Gen Star Thoroughbreds and trainer Safi Joseph Jr. We go to the fourth race now, the start of a pick three and maiden claiming event at a six furlong trip. Scratch the Juan Uno Baby Bird, Jose Alvarez on the four anywhere road, Jesus Rios on the seven strength of gold. The favorite was the 10 New York Giants. And they're off. Stumbling pretty badly at the break was electric heat. Good start from between horses for miles ahead, who puts a neck on top. Strength of Gold tries to run with him early on. Up on the outside, it's Duke of Tisnow. Away in the top flight, he's now third. Capitan Fofo next toward the rail. Followed fifth by See the Song, then the big favorite, New York Giant. Chad's Choice is next, third last. Second last, Anywhere Road. And after a less than stellar getaway, Electric Heat is last of all as Duke of Tisnow goes after miles ahead up front. Duke of Tis now, now a second and a half a length behind miles ahead who just rebroke under Prado as New York Giant moves up on the outside and he now runs into second. Capitan Fofo in tight toward the rail. Three clear of Chad's choice with five sixteenths to go. Miles ahead got the jump, but New York Giant bids up on the outside as they move past the quarter mile pole. Prado's got something in the tank here as miles ahead on this major class drop broke very nicely today and wheels for home on a four length lead. New York Giant can't catch him, nor can anybody else. With an eighth of a mile to go, nine to one the price, and miles ahead, an aptly named winner. Miles ahead, striding clear by seven, by eight, and still moving away. Capitan Fofo up for second, miles ahead, dominates. Uh, Capitan Fofo second, New York Giant third, then Anywhere Road, and Chad's choice. Nice run here today from number five, Miles Ahead. He showed absolutely nothing in his career debut, but it was against a lot, and I do repeat, a lot better competition. The son of Competitive Edge had just that on the strength of the class drop. All the names associated with Miles Ahead were appropriate as he won by a mile. Trained by Eddie Plesa Jr. for Eddie Edgar Prado on board. Owned by Lori Plesa, Leon Elman, and David Mellon. They forgot about him. He was 9-1, to one, Miles Ahead, and Acacia Courtney, fourth race winner. Let's go to the fifth race now, the start of the Rainbow Six on turf at a one-mile trip. Maiden Claimers in for $16,000. Scratch the 13, last jet out, a field of 12. The favorite was the 10, Alaskan. And they're up. Inside, it was Hero Up who won the break. Moving on the outside, Alaskan put into play early. Away in the top flight is Hero's return. He's now third. Fayez working over from his outside gate. He's now racing in fourth. His barn buddy, Bacano, has dropped over to the rail to race from fifth. Then Diamond Dreamer. 
Followed out wide by beach traffic and splitting horses, Sergeant Azer. He's now mid-flight and about five lengths behind. Then back to Macho Doro, racing ahead of Garnett, second last traceability, and Cuey is last of all behind an opening quarter of 23 and three. Into the backstretch they go. Hero up on top by a length and a half. Heroes returns second. Alaskan on the outside third. Bacano at the rail is fourth. Fayez is back to fifth, a length and a half better than Sergeant Azer. Then it's beach traffic. In the two-path, Diamond Dreamer is dropping back a touch, a length better than Macho Doro and Garnett. Traceability is unhurried at this stage, and still at the back is the newcomer, Cuey. They went through the opening half mile in 47 and 2 as they kick it to the far turn. Hero up maintains the advantage of a length and a half. Hero's return is second. Alaskan on the outside, third. Bacano waits racing room for Paco, fourth and down inside. Back to fifth and Fayez alongside Sergeant Ager. Beach traffic starts to pick up his feet for Gathleon while four wide as Hero up still has the lead. Hero up after three quarters and 111 and 1 will have to deal with Bacano, who's into the clear and charging nicely. Eighth of a mile to go. Bacano shifting ground for Paco. He straightens him up and he moves away. Hero up is back to second. Fayez has run into third. Alaska never fired, but Bacano is on his way. Four to one on Bacano, a five length winner. Hero up second. Fayez third. Beach traffic. Finish fourth. Nice performance here today by number eight, Bacano. Paco Lopez is just such a master at not having to work very hard, but having his horses in the right spot. And this was certainly the case aboard number eight, Bacano. He moved him into the clear and shook the reins three or four times. All he had to do was straighten him up, and he did that. And Bacano responded to the maiden score. Trained by Antonio Sano for Palmar Racing and Caroli Racing. Four to one on Bacano. He hero up to start the rainbow six. Back now for race number six on the program, the start of the late pick five. Claimers at a price tag of 12,500. Scratch the three and the eight, a field of six. Off time favorites for five, Blue Buff, and six, Flawless Moon. And uh, they're off. Bobbling a touch at the start was Blue Buff, and Flawless Moon shuffled the third last. The speed comes from the rail horse, Litigant, who's now headed off for a clear advantage. St. Larned away in second, Uncle Gregory out of their third. Followed by the favorites, they're together, Blue Buff and Flawless Moon, and they're both moving up a bit, and the early trailer is She Love Me. They make their way to the half-mile grounds, Litigant, Back from Tampa in front, three parts of length, St. Larned. On the outside is second, Uncle Gregory. Third toward the inside, alongside Flawless Moon and Blue Buff. And the trailer is She Love Me. 23 seconds for the opening quarter. There's three furlongs left to go. Litigan down inside with a narrow lead. St. Larned up on the outside is now second. On from third and Flawless Moon. Back to fourth and inside goes Blue Buff. Second last, Uncle Gregory hasn't picked up his feet, nor has She Love Me, who's last of all with a quarter of a mile remaining. 45 and 3 for the opening half mile. Here comes Blue Buff and Flawless Moon after this top duo of Litigant and St. Larned. Now Blue Buff striding forward to take a clear lead on the outside. Flawless Moon is there, second, four back to third running Litigant. Then it's St. Larned, 16th to go. Torres asking Blue Buff to finish it, and he has. Blue Buff in even money, home first. Flawless Moon second, Litigant was third in one minute, 10 and 34 100. The cream rises to the top in today's sixth race as number five, Blue Buff, gets in the clear when he needed to and gets the money under jockey Christian Torres, owned by DJ Stable and trained by John Service. He's not as good as he once was, but he's as good once as he ever was. It's Blue Buff, uneven money winner. Let's go to the seventh race now, the start of the late pick four, five furlongs on turf. Florida bred allowance horses with a scratch of the one scribe. Field of seven, the betters like the number five, Captain Ron, the number seven, Grand Malbec. And they're off. Slower to start than the others was Amelia's Wild Ride. 
Quick to start was Captain Ron from the three wide side. Our boy Bodie runs with him and Grand Malbec makes it a party as Honolulu Express backs off to be fourth. Away second last is Cryogenic and Amelia's wild ride is last of all as Captain Ron gets the lead and the rail. Captain Ron and Vasquez in front by a neck. Grand Malbec on the outside second. Cryogenic into the clear now moving to take third. Back to fourth and our boy Bodie. Then Honolulu Express and Amelia's wild ride. 21-3 and three for the opening quarter speed. Cryogenic bids up outside of Captain Ron as Grand Malbec calls it an afternoon. Honolulu Express and Amelia's Wild Ride try to rally. Top of the lane. Cryogenic on the outside toward the railing. Captain Ron there an eighth of a mile from home and a half length apart but Cryogenic's getting to this leader now. Cryogenic putting a neck on top. Captain Ron is back to second. Third is Honolulu Express. Close to home with Cryogenic in front. Cryogenic beat Captain Ron who was second. Honolulu Express third in 55 and three. Number six, Cryogenic, a big time closer. He sat close to the pace today, at least for him. He was third and in range, and he was the one to recognize turning for home. He wore down the favorite, Captain Ron, in the concluding stages, getting our leading jockey, Irad Ortiz Jr., a Wednesday success. This one for Jordan Wyckoff and trainer Mike Maker. Let's go to the eighth race now, the start of the late pick three. Phillies and Mares at a five furlong journey over the firm turf. Scratch number six, Majestic Mayara, a field of eight. The off-time favorites included the one, High Jingo, and the four, Awesome Roar. And they're off. Picture perfect beginning. Across the course early with Glory Roll searching for an advantage, but here's Band of Angels hunting racing room between horses as Valaro, and Valaro goes after Band of Angels who has the lead. Down at the inside and high jingo from between horses and awesome roar. Glory roll beat to the punch today while wide on the course. Two back to Gilda F. The two at the back are Bright Venezuelan and Diablo's Darling. Into the far turn they go with Laura Kornmeyer and Band of Angels in front by a neck. Valaro moves up on her outside and now Valaro takes over. On from third is Awesome Roar looking for room as High Jingo. Wide and glory roll then Bright Venezuelan and Gilda F and they're at the top of the stretch. 21 and 4 for the opening quarter speed. On the far outside Awesome Roar now challenging the leader Valaro looking for racing room now as Paco on High Jingo. Didn't get through. Bounced into the inside running Band of Angels. In deep stretch Awesome Roar is 8 to 5 and Awesome Roar Roar is an eighth race winner. Valaro holds second. High Jingo is third. And fourth is Bright Venezuelan, 56 and 1. Best trip here of the two favorites went to number four, Awesome Roar, under jockey Louise Saez. And the daughter of Insumation is just so consistent. She brings her cards to the table every day. She wins today for Herbert Miller and Ernest Morsch Mark. Awesome Roar, your eighth race winner, as High Jingo had to settle for a minor placing check late. Time for a commercial timeout. Still to come, the late daily double. Well, Fazig's family, basically. Some of the guys that work here I've known for 30 years. Great customer service. I'm not only a buyer with them, but I'm a seller. There's a lot of different things that sometimes you need in a sale, and, and Fazig Tipton is there every step of the way. They show year after year that they're ethical and they're fair, and they enjoy what they do. But when you're around people that have a combination of all those things, you know, you can't lose. Back now for race number nine on the program. First half of the late daily double. Starter allowance horses in for an optional price tag of $50,000. Scratch the five speed effect to field of five. Favorites were one New York style and six over deliver. And they're off. Look to be a clean and level beginning. Toward the inside, Bueno, 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 and New York style both began well on the far outside over Deliver. Now moves for forward position. Second last earlier is Tune In, and the trailer is Gentle Warrior. Out of the shoot and on to the main course, New York style leads by an neck. Over Deliver on the outside is second, back to third, and Bueno, Bueno, Bueno. Then Tune In, and three to the trailer, Gentle Warrior. They make their way now out of the chute and onto the main course. The opening quarter strong enough. 24 seconds flat. New York style and over deliver battling up front. New York style by length. Third and in range is Bueno, Bueno, Bueno. Then tune in and Gentle Warrior. They head past the 5 eighths and go to the half mile point. With the advantage, it's still New York style a half a length. Over deliver in no hurry. Biding his time on the flank of the leader. Second back to third and Bueno, Bueno, Bueno. On from fourth and tune in and still far back to Gentle Warrior. Warrior. That's the five of them as they make their way now to the far turn to the five sixteenths they go. New York style has the lead over deliver. Up on the outside is now right after him second. Three back to tune in and then bueno, bueno, bueno. Top of the lane. Here's over deliver under light handling from Gaffleone up to take the lead. 
Back to second, New York style, who cuts the corner and tries to find under pressure. Tune in is now third. Inside the final eighth of a mile, over to Liver. Now stretching forward to get a three-length lead. Back to second is New York style, and that's the way they'll finish on latest Gentle Warrior, but over deliver will deliver as the odds on favorite. Here's Gentle Warrior from way back. He'll finish third as New York style held second, then tune in, and bueno, bueno, bueno. Easy win in the end for number six, over deliver as Tyler Gaffleon gets a rotting double on the program. He points the son of overanalyze in the right direction and wins for trainer Sappy Joseph Jr., training double for Sappy. Running owner Frank Calabri, Tyler Gaffleon, and over deliver, do deliver in the ninth race. Tenth and final race on turf at one mile, Canadian Claimers in for $32,000. Scratch the two and six, a field of nine. Off time favorites included the four beyond the call and the eight, Mozano. And runners away. At the inside, Rap Store Rocks begins the best, moving between horses. Prince Kozan now goes after the lead. Up on the outside and still scheming, and from between horses, beyond the call. Backing off is Bling Seeker to race three wide, and a neck in front of Mozano. Next at the rail and let's play Hardball, who's a length and a half better than Big Treasure, and settling in at the back of the field is Express Boy. Around the first turn they go. Gaffleone got the lead pretty easy with Prince Kozan. He leads a length and a quarter, racing second beyond the call. On the outside, still scheming is there. Third, Rap Store Rocks at the rail. Fourth, in between horses, Mozano is an early fifth. Sixth inside, let's play hardball alongside Bling Seeker from seventh. Then it's Big Treasure eighth and Express Boy ninth and last. The opening quarter was rock solid 22 and four. They had less than five furlongs from home with Prince Kozan taking pressure now from beyond the call on the outside. Mozano has worked into the two path between horses out wide and still scheming. Rap Store Rocks is along the rail. Let's play hard balls into the bit, but he's got no place to go yet. Juarez tips three wide for a run. Then on the outside and Bling Seeker ahead of Big Treasure. And Express Boy has trailed throughout as they round the far turn. Prince Kozan has the lead beyond the call is second. On the outside, let's play hard ball. Let go for a run. Three wide third. Still scheming is next. And from the back, Big, Pre Big Treasure. They're at the top of the stretch. Prince Kozan still has the lead. And he's on top two and a half with an eighth of a mile more to get. Let's play hardball. Down the center for Juarez is now second. Beyond the call is third. In deep stretch, Prince Kozan has to finish what he started on the outside. And let's play hardball is only second best to Prince Kozan, a gate to wire winner. Let's play hardball second. Beyond the call, third, then Big Treasure and Bling Seeker. Number three, Prince Kozan off it better than double his morning line. He was 5-1 to one on the morning line. Betters didn't like him. He was 11-1 to one at post time, but they should have liked him. He went right to the top and went all the way. And Tyler Gaffleone, a sweep of the late daily double and a riding triple on the program. Owned by Mastic Beach Racing and trained by Jorge Delgado. It's Prince Kozan triggering a rainbow six for more than 1,200. And a carryover going forward to Thursday for more than $20,000. And that's it, another Wednesday in the books. We continue on, obviously a 10 race Thursday awaits here tomorrow afternoon. And Saturday's a big one here at Gulfstream Park as our road to the Florida Derby picks up with the grade three, $250,000 Holy Bowl. Hit the hay, I've been working all day. Hit the hay, what do you say? Hit the hay, hit the hay, well I'm tired. Let me tell you, Jack, I'm so tired. 